Hello, everyone, and welcome back to episode 14 of the Mixology Talk podcast, where we simplify cocktails and bartending techniques so you can make great drinks at home. I'm Julia. And I'm Chris. And we left you hanging two weeks ago on exactly what today's topic is going to be. So are you ready for it? All right. It's not much of a surprise since we already had, and uh, if you've read the podcast title, but yeah, we're going to be talking about general concepts of food and cocktail pairings. So I think most people think about food pairings and they think about wine. There are some standards like white wine with fish and red meat means red wine. That's all I know about it, by the way. (laughs) But when you're talking about cocktails instead of wine, I think a lot of people don't know where to start. Yeah, and um, I'm sure I'll, this has happened to everybody, but can you, if you can imagine sitting down to dinner and you have your cocktail and all of a sudden the food comes and they're not quite good together, yeah, shall we say. Exactly. Not not a match made in heaven. I've definitely had that happen, especially, I think, I don't know about you, but I walk into a restaurant, I take a look at the cocktail menu and I order whatever looks good with absolutely no thought to what I'm actually going to order for food. And then the food comes and it's a mistake. <laughs> <laughs> So today we're going to go over some really basic ideas for choosing cocktails and food that should generally play well together. Of course, no rule is perfect, but hopefully this conversation will help point you in the right direction. So we're going to start with some very broad food categories. So I think we may as well start with something that's often the first course. So let's talk about lighter things, things like fish, salads, and lighter pastas. Chris, can you give us a little advice on what kind of cocktails you would order? Yeah, so for these style of food, I would probably go with something a little bit lighter and more citrus driven. So you typically have uh, vinaigrette inside of your salads. Um, So the citrus and the acid are going to go and marry kind of well together, not kind of be strange um, as components together. So those lighter citrus driven cocktails would Mm -hmm. be a good choice. When citrus goes well with fish in general, you often serve it with citrus. Exactly. So, you know, they're they're things that are not going to be foreign to each other. Um, The other thing is you probably want to stay away from heavy barrel contacted spirits, so bourbon, rye, brandies, and stuff like that, um, spirits like that, you probably want to steer clear from. I'd probably go more with the lighter spirits like rum, te- some tequilas, um, clear you know, in gin, color. exactly. Yeah. So anything that doesn't have a ton of barrel contact to it. Um, the other thing is that if you're making cocktails, um, one of the things that I like to do is actually incorporate um, kind of a sweeter style of wine. So like an aperitif like Lillet or a Cochi Americano are great additions to these early styles, you know, early kinds of cocktails um, that you're going to have with appetizers. And it adds a lot of flavor um, with it as well and kind of lowers the alcohol content of uh, the cocktail. Yeah, and for a first course, that's definitely not a bad idea. Exactly. And as always, um, sparkling cocktails for the beginning are always kind of a no-brainer. So when in doubt, a sparkling cocktail will definitely work. I think you just like sparkling cocktails. I do. I think I have a carbonation problem. (laughs) Let's add that to the list of problems. Oh, dear. (laughs) <laughs> so uh, the next type of food I think it makes sense to come next and that is absolute contrast from what we just talked about this is red meat it's yeah. heavy pastas and it's anything fried I love it so heavy food means you can get away with stronger flavor and in my opinion sometimes more alcohol too um You may actually need more alcohol and stronger flavor to break through the richness of the meal, especially if you're having something fried or some really super heavy pastas. Yeah, absolutely. So for me, whenever I have red meat, I want something, I I want a brown spirit. So something that has had that barrel contact and uh, like a classic pairing with you know, a uh, high fatty steak is something with a lot of tannins for red wine. So that's why you want to go with those brown spirits because they've seen a lot of that wood contact and they're adding that to the um, to the drink. So for, tannins come from the barrel, right? Barrel stem seeds, but yeah, absolutely. So, tannins so, come from wood. It sounds like woody things. Sure. and um, <laughs> I made that up. <laughs> I believe it. I'm in. Um, <laughs> but yeah, the, uh, brown spirits definitely play well with these high fatty um, proteins. And um, I know a lot of people that actually add cognac to their steak tartare. So it's a, it's a kind of this really cool combination of flavors and textures and everything else. For me, one of my all-time favorite food pairings is either an Old Fashioned or a Manhattan with a nice, big, juicy bacon burger. 
it's, I'm not sure if it qualifies as a food pairing if it's just your favorite food and drink of all time. Well, uh, that's true. But yeah, <laughs> it, it, actually, that's a good point. Yeah, Manhattan's are my favorite and burgers are one of my favorite meals. So I'll give anyway, it to I'll you. I'll take it. Right. I, I, honestly, I do think they would be really, really good together. So I, I, uh, I'll give it to you. <laughs> so uh, when you move on to heavy, creamy pastas, this is things like fettuccine alfredo or um, carbonara, carb- uh, carbonara <laughs> or other um, really sort of... These tend to have a lot of cream and then they tend to be very, very rich. Um, in my opinion, I would stay away from the oak spirits for this pairing. Um, and the same applies for highly acidic cocktails as well. Yeah. So for this, I would probably look to clear spirits um, and something that might even have uh, some egg whites or even a milk component to the drink as well. Because the egg whites are going to kind of help match the texture in the body of the dish that you're about to eat, and it won't be so far-fetched um, when you're going to kind of dr- eat and drink of them kind of side by side. Yeah, I, and I I said uh, no highly acidic cocktails just because everybody knows acid and cream do not go well together. I'm, I'm, I've made cheese before, and that's how you make it. <laughs> right, exactly. <laughs> so um, you don't want to have uh, cheese going on. So nope. um, yeah, that's probably the best recommendation is something along those lines. A and little like bit I said, of acid is fine. I right. think a little bit of acid can be really nice to cut through the creaminess, but uh, you don't want so much that you're going to be getting a, a success. Yeah. Yeah, like a margarita with a, you know, Alfredo sauce just sounds like a nightmare to me. Sounds, <laughs> sounds like, yeah, yeah, like a bad like news. Like a long evening. <laughs> <laughs> um, so with anything that is fried, I typically recommend a cocktail with a lot of acid to it. So imagine when you get something like a fried fish taco. And one of the first things you do is you kind of squeeze a lime across the top of it because it adds flavor and it helps to kind of lighten up that dish. So the same thing is why I would recommend a highly acidic cocktail like a margarita for um, fried meals. Um, That makes a ton of sense. I never thought of that before, but you definitely, you know, with fish and chips, you'll put either lemon or vinegar on it. You're you're always going for that sort of acid component to break through the friedness. Right, exactly. Which is a word, by the way. (laughs) It is now. (laughs) Um, But that's the kind of idea. So you're kind of contrasting the high fat content of something fried by adding something a lot lighter. And once again, um, a sparkling cocktail is definitely going to go really well with something like that because once again, those... The, the carbonation is going to help to kind of reset the palate a little mm-hmm. bit every time. Well, you think about it, you get a you know burger and french fries and to go with those french fries, you get a soda. Yeah, no, it's true. Or a beer. <laughs> or a beer. Yes, exactly. Um, so, yeah, now let's get on to one of your favorite portions and let's start talking about some uh, dessert cocktail pairings. So I've waited my entire life for this moment. It's really all about desserts for me. And this is my favorite part of the meal. And it, to be honest with you, it's the only part of the meal that should ever exist. Who needs protein or vegetables when you have cheesecake, right? Exactly. See, he understands. <laughs> so desserts vary a lot. And your choices will definitely differ a lot, too. So I'm going to go through a different ki- couple a couple different kinds of desserts, um, lest I give you bad advice across the board. <laughs> I've had a lot of practice with this. I've had a lot of practice ordering (laughs) cocktails with desserts. I've had a lot of practice eating desserts. So I like to consider myself a true expert in this category. We are in good hands, everyone. Absolutely. (laughs) The one thing I would definitely start with is saying that desserts are usually sweeter. And uh, what that means for you is that you're not going to want something that's super, super tart because it's going to turn your mouth inside out. You don't want a very, very tart margarita with a super, super sweet chocolate cake. It's not going to go nicely together. So now just across the board in general, you're probably going to want to go a little bit further on the sweet side of the spectrum. Yeah. So like for me, um, the first thing I think about is that morning cup of coffee. I tend to put some uh, sugar in my coffee. But if you have that against like um, a cinnamon roll, you're, all of the sugar is going to get lost in that coffee. Sugar. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> so you kind of want the sweetness levels to be a little bit closer matched together exactly. uh, for these styles of cocktails for sure. Exactly. And if you're not sure, this is a great time to ask the bartender. If, you know, if, if you're not sure what to order or what the level of sweetness is, you can ask the bartender, say, I'm going to, I just ordered the chocolate cake and I would really like this. Is it, you know, where is it on the sweetness or can I have a little, can I have a little bit of a sweeter version? Yeah. So let me ask you a question then. So let's just kind of go through some of the categories of desserts and uh, what do you think you would like to drink with something that's a little bit richer kind of creamy uh, maybe even a little bit on a really sweet side like ice cream or possibly even a cheesecake 
Ooh. Well, first of all, yes, I will have all of the above. Thank you very much. <laughs> um, I, I would say for these types of, of food, they tend to be, or desserts, excuse me, they tend to be, again, rich and creamy and very, very sweet, but they've, they've got the creaminess in the dessert. And so I would stay away from egg white cocktails, in my opinion. The reason being egg white cocktails are awesome because of their creaminess, but I think I've already got enough of that in the dessert. So in my opinion, I think, I think a ultra heavy dessert um, can go better with a lighter cocktail because it gives the contrast and can, can kind of give you a break from the intensity. I don't know about you, but you ever had one of those amazing New York cheesecakes and you have like six bites and you cannot move your jaw anymore because you're just like, oh my gosh, my whole so mouth sweet. is cheesecake. Yeah. yeah, exactly. At that point, the last thing you want is like a tall glass of milk. You don't want that creaminess. You're going to want like something with just a little bit of acid or a little bit of... Um, tartness to, to break through again not so not so tart that it's going to turn your mouth inside out but you're probably going to want a little bit of contrast so for something like this maybe a lemon drop i could see that but again it's got to be a little bit on the sweet side because i don't want to go too too far on the acid cool all right so um now that we're getting into fall this is going to be happening a lot more and uh maybe let's talk about what you would pair with baked fruit, like baked pears, maybe an apple pie. This is an easy one. I think it, it for me at least, because baked. So when I think of baked fruit, I think of pies and cobblers and all th these sorts of things. And uh, it just reminds me of one of the descriptors that you have frequently used to describe anything that's seen a barrel or seen a lot of time in a barrel. And that is delicious. Delicious. Exactly. Baking spices. Oh, uh, yes. Baking you spices. You often use that term. You say Oh, this has seen a lot of, of time in the barrel. I'm getting a lot of the vanilla and baking spices. Right. And so in my mind, I think it's just a perfect pairing. Go with something that has seen uh, that has seen some serious time in the barrel and it's got some good color to it. I think bourbon would be a great choice. Um, anything in that sort of category. There are also some, uh, I, I think it would be a great idea to bring in something that's got a little bit of nuttiness to it. Yeah, so maybe like a sherry or maybe a nochino. I could um, see that. I, I personally absolutely love nochino. It's a it's a walnut liqueur, and I think that would go incredibly well with some of these some of these baked goods like a uh, apple pie or yeah, something. Yeah, I think like last that. year in uh, I think it was fall or winter we were drinking um, nochino Manhattans like. Like they were water. <laughs> we actually put them in our breakfast cereal. Yeah, it was delicious. It's true. Yeah. It made work more interesting. It, very much so, yeah. <laughs> Didn't get much done, though. <laughs> That's not true. It would be way too expensive. Yeah, I could definitely <laughs> see the, the nutty qualities kind of working well with this style of um, desserts for sure. It's like when you don't like nuts in your dessert because you don't like the, the texture, but you like the flavor. That's a go. great idea. No, exactly. absolutely. All right. So now let's take a look at one of my favorite styles of dessert. And that's typically a little bit on the lighter uh, spectrum, maybe even a little bit more fruit focused and sometimes even tart. So maybe like a gelato or some kind of fruit dessert. So these tend to be on the least sweet side of the spectrum as far as desserts go. These are things like, I, I think of like a lemon gelato. I think of, uh, well, gelatos across the board, really. And some tarts that tend to be a little bit less sweet as well, like a lemon tart or something like that. Mm -hmm. um, and in this case, I think that it's just a perfect time to bring out the sparkling. I think, well, what isn't? But <laughs> yeah, exactly. <laughs> I, I could really see a, a sparkling wine cocktail or any, any sparkling cocktail at all um, going really, really nicely with that sort of lighter fruit flavor, with that sort of tartness that you tend to have a, a little bit of tartness with these gelatos. So I think that would be a good choice. Yeah, and I remember I did a... Um cocktail pairing a little while ago and one of my favorite things to do with gelato is actually to pour limoncello right over the top of it and um, for that particular pairing I actually made a tequila based limoncello and um, to sweeten it I made a basil syrup um, and it was that's all it was it was just an infused vodka or infused tequila with um, uh, flavored syrup and I poured it right on top of I think it was a strawberry um, gelato and it was absolutely fantastic. It was incredible. Together. Yeah, so that worked out really well. So um, that's something I definitely recommend. Just try a little bit of limoncello over um, some gelato and yeah. it is absolutely fantastic. Yeah, if you don't want to pair them, you can just throw them both in the same cup. <laughs> right, exactly. <laughs> it sounds pretty easy and uh, like a lot of fun for sure. Definitely. So there's one major category of dessert that we haven't covered yet and uh, I think we all know what that is and that is 
chocolate. Chocolate. Yes, we saved the best for last for sure. So chocolate has a huge spectrum in my mind in terms of, of where the flavor can actually be. You can have everything from a very sort of bitter, not very sweet chocolate cake, with like a flourless chocolate cake, all the way over to uh, just a super sweet chocolate cupcake with buttercream icing on top. So I think you definitely want to take into consideration how sweet your your uh, dish is going to be before you order a drink. And again, feel free to ask the bartender if he's not crazy busy. Um, usually they're pretty nice people. <laughs> Sometimes. Sometimes. <laughs> um, so would would you go kind of like down the road of an egg white cocktail or? I think so. I think when I think of chocolate, I often think of like, you know, uh, you you have a brownie and you have a glass of milk, right? You want that cream to sort of contrast. And so I think an egg white cocktail can bring that creaminess without actually bringing the cream. So that's a good option. Um, and, and it still brings a little bit of the tartness as well, but you've got a really nice, uh, a really nice um, creaminess to go with your chocolate. Yeah. And I could see even like a, a, a milk based cocktail, like a brandy milk punch or something along those lines going really well with chocolate just because they are such great par uh, companions, milk with chocolate, like we, you mentioned earlier, I believe. Oh, yeah. I think that, that it doesn't get better than that. And, and of course, the last thing is, is coffee liqueur is always a good option with oh, chocolate. Oh, coffee and chocolate. Absolutely. Yeah, things like Kahlua or, or Bailey's even. I think that those are always good options. So those are definitely a good, a good thing to consider. Cool. Well, that's a, that's a lot to take in for sure. And I don't know about <laughs> anybody else, but I am starving now. I am so hungry. All I want is chocolate cake right now. I want something fried. I want something covered in chocolate you want and I want something burger, sparkling. <laughs> oh, actually, yeah, that sounds pretty good. <laughs> that's not surprising. So I think uh, that's just way too much to remember to think about everything we said in this episode. But I think if you can just remember one thing, remember that there are two ways to pair. You can pair based on similarity where you go for a drink that's similar to what you're eating or you can pair based on contrast. Absolutely. So um, those are the two options or the two things to remember right there. Um, so something similar goes well because the flavors align together, kind of like the appetizer, uh, the salad and something a little bit citrus driven. Exactly. Um, now, as far as f contrast, um, remember the uh, sparkling um, cocktails and the fried foods. That would be a great example of contrast there. And it offers you a break from what you're kind of enjoying and gives you contrast. But it doesn't turn your mouth inside out either. There's there's kind of a, a limit to contrast as well. You don't want to go too crazy. Yeah, you don't want to go 180 degrees in the opposite direction. <laughs> That'll wake you up. <laughs> yeah. So that's it. That's our super quick guide to pairing food and cocktails. So as for the next episode, we've been getting a lot of questions recently from our listeners. And next week, we're going to take a stab at answering them. So if you have a question, go ahead and send it in using the buttons that you can find near the end of the show notes at mixologytalk.com slash 14. And we'll go ahead and answer them next week. Have a great one, everyone. And cheers. Cheers. Never miss an episode by subscribing in iTunes or YouTube. And as always, check out the show notes by clicking on the right.